team, y'all don't get it, do ya? New squad, new year, but the same ego. New ring, new bling, check Stilo, and they wanna see the show like When San Diego Eagle, State unfair. reached their first Final Four and subsequent national championship game, it was a landmark moment in San Diego sports history. It brought about just all kinds of emotions, joy, happiness, tears of joy. And man, I know it was that much and more for me. I can't imagine what it felt like for our next guest. He is a San Diego kid, and we are thrilled to have him join us. None other than Caleb Giordano. What is going on, Caleb? Welcome to the show. What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. You know, we were all out there in Houston. I was walking around flashing my ring, thought I was the business. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I saw this this tall tall guy come straight at me. Like, if you call that a ring? This is a ring. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to I had to I had to rep that twenty twenty team as best as possible. It was like that scene in Crocodile Dundee. He's like, you call that a knife? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a knife. <laughs> That's yeah, a knife. Exactly, exactly. I know that Final Four run for San Diego State was extra special for you. There was an amazing article that came out that we had the chance to read timesstandard.com and just kind of really detailed you know your journey since um you know uh, leaving the program here in San Diego State now you were obviously a, a part of one of the best teams to ever play in the red and black that was cut short from the pandemic and so just reading that article you know we'll put the link down in the description for all you guys can can uh go re give it a read because it, it was just a fantastic article so you're from la mesa yeah originally from la mesa uh, my dad and, and my uncles all went to helix high school down here um or actually lived back in la mesa uh, i was i was in temecula for uh, about 12 to 13 years um through through middle school and, and high school um and then uh, when I went to San Diego State, uh, actually, when I went to San Diego Miramar College is when uh, they decided to move back down to San Diego and kind of be closer to, you know, our whole family's down here. We got both my uncles, my grandma. So um, we're back down here and love it more than ever. OK, so before we jump into anything further, I want to talk a little bit about being out there in Houston and what that was like for you, you know, seeing some of your former teammates out there playing their hearts out on the court. I mean, was it was it as as sweet or was it a little bittersweet for you knowing that you got you guys had that opportunity taken away from you? Uh, I mean, it was a little bittersweet, but I, I feel like once I entered the arena and saw the guys again and saw just like, you know, I, I saw AG and Nate and, and Jared and, and the twins and, and all these guys that I played with and I was just, it, there was no there was no sort of bitterness to that it was it was just sweet it was amazing to see them out there i mean obviously i want to be out there in uniform playing getting an opportunity i mean i dreamt my whole life of of playing in the march madness tournament whether that was the first round or the final four and to to see them in the final four was uh it, it was amazing honestly it was a great experience I think it was, well, I don't know which player said it, but I saw it on social media. They said that Fisher had a quote that once SDSU made a Final Four, it was going to be like everyone felt like they made it, you know, who had played oh. before. And so I, I'm assuming that's probably was the experience that, that you had. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had everyone there. We had everyone from from Michael Cage to Lorenzo Wade to Trey Kell. Uh, Malachi was there. Jordan was there. You know, we had so many people there because not not because, you know, only the support for for our brothers and for our team, but because we literally felt like we all made it. You know, we all felt like we were winning. You know, it was just such a such a great thing to be around the guys again and then just see how how supportive everyone was no matter what i mean you got guys that never made the tournament that were on san diego state you got guys that you know like michael cage and, and some of these guys who are you know stars in san diego that were there so it's a uh, yeah, it was awesome to see okay so describe to us your feelings that were going on when lamont butler hit that buzzer beater <laughs> and just seventy thousand plus screaming fans just in in complete shock uh that was i i told my dad this and i told my my best friend roman this i said man i've never not been able to control my emotions like my entire life like he hit the shot and i was like it was 
it, it was like I hit the shot. Like it was like a dream come true. It was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, he really just did that. And I'm here in person seeing that. And like everyone, everyone around us was like, what just happened? Like, did that really just happen? It was just, I think everyone was in such a level of shock that no one knew what to do. Everyone just like was kind of running around with their heads cut off at that point. We were like, what in the world is going on? Uh, it was, it was incredible, man. It was, that's a feeling I've never felt in my life. And that's a feeling that I've dreamt to have for years, just in the tournament alone, you know, and to, you know, like, um, like you guys are saying, like, you know, fish said, you know, once, once one team makes it, we all make it like Lamont hit that shot. And we all felt like we were on the court hitting that shot with him. That's what it was. I mean, I, I, I can, attest to that i know mateo and i just completely lost it in the stands where we were at and you know hugging people all around us that we didn't know and i mean there's just such a level of disbelief it's exactly a complete shock over over what what had just happened and and just the the, you know not only the buzzer beater but how the the, how monumental it was the moment in the final four to hit a shot like that um It's the best sporting event feeling I've ever had. Oh, for sure. By far. I mean, I've, I've been to, uh, I went to watch Kobe and the Lakers play against the Boston Celtics in Boston in 2010 when they played in the finals game five. And that was electric. And it's the shot compared is it, blows that through the roof. It's, it, it was like, and I feel like it's because it's such a special part of kind of like, you know, I don't know, you know, the, the, if you ever called the shirt I was wearing and said 2020 revenge to her, it's just like seeing that was kind of like he had that shot. And there was, like I said, there's no sort of bitterness inside of me at, at that point. Everyone's just having a good time. Everyone's supporting everyone. And it's it's truly a family atmosphere. Such a release of emotion and just everything that we've all been carrying as Aztec Nation and especially for you guys as the players, you know, just that release. I mean, 70,000 plus in a stadium, the NBA doesn't have anything close to that in the finals i mean the arenas are maybe what 20s you know seventy thousand. Yeah. Seventy thousand is crazy i mean i think i think max you'll get is like thirty thousand in the nba arena for the finals you know um but yeah i mean i've, I've never seen i'd say about uh, that's the first time i've ever seen ten thousand grown men cry at the same time <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, was just, I was looking around everyone had tears in their eyes we were like oh my gosh I'll admit it. I still get emotional when I watch the replays and all the different fan reaction videos on YouTube. I I get sucked in Mm -hmm. that, that wormhole of just watching videos from so many experiences that us fans have had. And it's just, it's overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, I I can't even scroll through Twitter anymore without seeing that at least once a day in my feed. (laughs) And every time I I stop and watch it every time still, it it still gives me that shock feeling. Okay. So let me, I want to read this quote from that time standard article, because I know this game and this run and just everything of the last, last season has had a, a big impact on you specifically. So the quotes reads for the past two years, I kind of felt lost. I was about to kind of pack up and move to the state of Texas said Giordano to kind of get away from my past life and what I went through with this Humboldt stuff. I felt like this whole thing, I had to give up on it because no one believed me. I kind of put all of that on pause because with San Diego State making it this far into the Final Four and the National Championship game, my drive to play basketball and my hunger for it, my passion for it has come back in full. And it's awesome to see. Where Where is this stemming from, Caleb? Uh, you, you know, I, I've given my all to basketball um, for the last uh, 15, 16 years of my life. Um, you know, I, I originally started with football, actually. Um, my dad played college football at BYU. Um, and uh, he wasn't too happy when I picked San Diego State to play at, but uh, um, <laughs> he played football at BYU and so did my uncles. And so I started with football. Um, and then I just, you know, my freshman year of high school, I was 5'4", you know, 95 pounds. And it, I, at that size, you can't really get hit or else you're hurt automatically, you know. So, um, <laughs> I, I it was like, you know what, I'm going to try basketball and just stuck with it and worked as hard as I could. And, um, you know, everything I kind of worked for uh, was, was shown in, in practice at San Diego State and, and even, you know, just being a preferred walk on that team. Uh, you know, obviously I got dealt a hand that, you know, as amazing as the experience was, you know, when you go to play a college sport, you want to play. 
Um, and I got dealt a hand on a team where we were 30 and two and fourth in the nation. Can't really complain about playing time at that point because the coach <laughs> knows what he's doing. So credit to coach Dutcher for that. But, uh, um, the situation at Humboldt is still an ongoing situation, so I can't uh, talk much about it. Um, there's a couple more articles that just recently came out. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just, you know, being at the Final Four um, after kind of just being, like I said, lost for two years. Um, you know, I was I was misadvised on 27 units, so my whole year at Humboldt actually didn't count towards anything, any of my school. Um uh, is, you know, I can't talk a, a lot about the allegations and what's coming on uh, due to us being in a, a lawsuit with them um, and being investigated right now. But, uh, you know, just a lot of stuff went down. And when I say no one believed me is we reported all this stuff day one when I left that campus. Um, I packed up my entire dorm room in 30 minutes and drove straight to San Francisco at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I just needed to get away. Uh, it was it was not good for my mental, not good for my physical. Um, I've always been one to stay fit and in shape and, and stay as athletic as possible. Um, and I, you know, gained 30 pounds. We couldn't practice, couldn't play games, couldn't, couldn't do any of that stuff. Um, kind of, kind of, you know, make us better individually as players. And so, um, going to the final four kind of re, re sparked, um, that, that light inside of me, you know, um, I was ready to back up and, and move to Texas. Uh, I had plans to go to Texas and, and be out there and, and start a new life and kind of get away from the, the California um, lifestyle that, you know, I, I felt like I was constantly in an up and down battle with. And so being out there kind of sparked an, an ignition. And then right before I actually left for Houston is when that reporter called me. I was like, hey, we're doing a story, this and that. And, you know, my dad kind of came up to me and he was like, hey, with this, all this stuff coming out and people finally believe in the story, like, do you want to get your eligibility back? Do you want to fight for it? And I was like, yeah, I do. Cause I, I you know, uh, for the rest of my life, I'd regret if I didn't give myself the opportunity to play again, you know? So that's where it came from. So Caleb, can you tell the viewers a little bit about like, uh, how many years you had played, like, you know, why you're getting like two more years from the NCAA, um, you know, and just a little bit about that situation, how you, how you get some of your, eligibility restored yeah so i played one year at miramar college um and then i redshirted my first year at san diego state and then played uh that that 2019 2020 season so technically i only used two two years of my clock um that being said when you start a division one clock it usually just runs out you know you got you got five years to play four so um but due to covid and the situation that happened up at humboldt state um they basically said, okay, you would have had two years to two more years to play. And due to the misadvisement and the situation with the head coach there and, and the, the, um, the school of Humboldt state or now known as Cal Poly Humboldt, uh, you know, they were like, Hey, we can grant you two years back. So, um, Division two, and I, I actually want to bring light to this as well, because I don't think a lot of a lot of athletes know. Um, and I found out through the reporter that was reporting on me. Um, when you play a division two sport, you can actually pause your clock and then go back and play. Um, I didn't know this, and I don't think a lot of athletes know this, and I think that should be very well known amongst a lot of athletes that decide to either transfer D1 down to D2 or are playing D2 currently. Um, so if you ever feel like you need, you know, I need a year break or I need something, you don't want to use a red street year or this and that, you can actually pause your active division two clock. Um, it doesn't work in D1 and it doesn't work in D3, but division two is different. You can pause your clock and play. So I had my D2 eligibility the whole time and I didn't even know. No one informed me. So I've been in the transfer portal for two years and nothing came out of it basically. And I had no idea. So, um, so I got my D2 back um, for division one. Uh, you know, had to go through a couple of petitions, obviously had to detail the, uh, the investigation through title nine and say, Hey, this is, you know, this was, I was unfairly treated. I was misadvised. They basically didn't count a whole year of, of school for me. And I, you know, I either one, I need those credits back or two, you know, I need that year back to be able to play college basketball. And so, um, that year plus the COVID year, um, plus all the situation and, uh, with the head coach and stuff, um, is uh they were able to grant me two years back if you want to fully step away from school as a whole um 
you know, you can step away, say, Hey, I want to step away. I want to take a gap here. I want to take a break. Basically in division two, you can say, Hey, I'm going to take a break from, uh, right. 2023 to 2024. And then I want to come back and resume my clock 2024, 2025. So you can play two years, take a year off, and then you'd still have two more years of eligibility left. So it's basically like taking a, a year off. Basically, it's basically like a redshirt year without having to take classes, without having to, um, you know, go to school, play basketball, stuff like that. Um, and, and most athletes don't know that. Most athletes won't ever have to do that usually. Um, but I think it's good to know for a lot of athletes because of, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and how messed up a lot of this stuff was for all these athletes that just didn't get that year back, basically. So are um, you being actively recruited right now, you know, by yeah. schools now that you have your eligibility back? Yeah, so I am in the transfer portal being actively recruited. Um, you know, I, I've talked to a couple couple places, um, uh, University of Portland, uh, Utah State, uh, University of Utah, um, Point Loma, just in contact with them. No offers or anything yet. Um, you know, those are all through connections and, and people that I know and, and connections I've developed over the years. Um, I went in, uh, and, and played in an open gym and worked out for a University of St. Catharines in San Marcos, and they offered me. Uh, to come play for them next year as well so that's you know that's definitely a good it's a good school to be able to stay home and and you know uh continue my career and play you know they're they're an nai and they're a small school but the reason why i transferred in the first place was to get playing time i felt like i deserved playing time i felt like i've you know i practiced through injury i, I played through you know sit 38 minutes and come in and hit a three ice cold you know like that's just I've always kept my body ready. I always kept myself ready. And I feel like I kind of owe it to myself to give myself an opportunity to play at, you know, not only the highest level, but a level of, you know, college basketball where I can showcase my talent. There's no doubt that you can play. I mean, everyone by now has seen the video of you cooking all the starters <laughs> in practice. I mean, how many shots did you make in a row? Like eight, eight in a yeah, row? Yeah, like seven, maybe six or seven in a row. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I mean, that was fun. That, that was, you know, that was one of those, you know, I just, the rim seemed like it was a, a, a door at that point. It seemed like it was just way, you know, three times the size as it actually was. And, you know, it, it wasn't just that time either, you know, um, you know, a lot of players can attest to this, you know, I played like that every day in practice as much as I could, you know, that was a drill to simulate um, one of the Nevada guards that was before our Nevada practice that year what his name was um, but he was a guard in Nevada and he would just go one-on-one -on -one with the big men and so the big men had to come up and guard and be able to you know get a stop and I mean I just I that's that's when I kind of saw blood I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I know how to do best and just go at him so well that you know San Diego State has had a history of guys who paid their dues at SDSU and then moved on you know, to other schools. I mean, a good, I think, case is Ben Perez, right? Mm -hmm. He was, you know, basically, I don't think he was on scholarship. I think he was a preferred walk-on, um, you know, played at a one or two years at SDSU, and then he transferred to Iona and actually got to the tournament, Yeah, which, you know, was awesome to see, uh, you know, him playing because we used to watch him at Viejas, you know, uh, get that opportunity to play in the tournament and get meaningful minutes in a game. And so I know Kate Alger is in the portal right now. I mean, he's kind of a similar situation, you know, and hopefully he, he lands somewhere where he can get some, some playing time and, and, yeah. and, you know, get a good opportunity. But yeah, I think for the, for the preferred walk-ons, I mean, that's valuable experience that you get playing at SDSU playing against that competition that then you can launch, you know, into another, um, another program. And, and my hope is just that, you know, even though you've been away for a couple of years, that people will have seen that tape, you know, and they'll see what you can do now. And they give you a shot, you know, to, to prove yourself. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm hoping for. I mean, it's, it's hard when you have no film. because That's what a lot of people rely on now, a lot of coaches. So 
you know, I'm going to do what I did when I came out of high school. I called up a bunch of coaches and said, Hey, can you have me up for a workout, get a workout, play with their guys. And, you know, I got a preferred walk on to university of Utah, BYU, San Diego state, you know, a lot, a lot of places. And so it's kind of like, kind of like that all over again, but I know my worth. I mean, I'm 24 years old. I got two years left. I just want to win. <laughs> you know, quite honestly, I, I know what it takes to win. I know what I need to do to win. I know that I need to make the right play and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to go drop 30 every game, but if that's what's needed, then I'll do that, <laughs> you know? Well, one of the good things, uh, one of the good points I liked in this article from the Time Standard is that, you know, it, it really it really highlighted that you've been a part of a winning program before. You saw mm-hmm. firsthand you were part of what it takes to win. And one thing that this Final Four run has really shown everyone shown the nation is that this team, this San Diego state team, most recently, I mean, this was built on a lot of maturity guys that have been in the program, guys that are seasoned. And so, Hey, I think that's something that that you're bringing already within yourself. That's, that's an asset. That's a key attribute to a team, that maturity guys that are seasoned that have been through some things. And of course, gone through this San Diego state program and, and have won and know what it takes to win. So. We're pulling for you, man. We're pulling for you. I appreciate it. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. All right, man. Anything else you want to send out to maybe the listeners or watchers or Aztec Nation or, or anybody that might be watching? Uh, just that everyone, everyone's family. Uh, no matter what, we're all family here. Um, you know, anybody that's watching, listening, uh, you know, um, anyone that's getting recruited by San Diego State, uh, anyone that's that's leaving in hopes of a new journey, you know, Kate Alger and Jared Barnett and, you know, anybody else that that uh, has announced they're transferring, just just keep hopeful. Um, you know, San Diego State has a culture of winning um, and a lot of coaches know that that is uh, is value to them. And like you said, um, when you go through you know, trials and tribulations of, of a winning program, you know, obviously, you know, may not win in the beginning, but the more and more you stick with it, um, you know, you'll, you'll win in the end. And that's, you know, credit to Coach Toucher, credit to Coach Velasquez, uh, you know, Coach Pollock, Coach Acker, um, Matt Soria. He's the, he's the real MVP of this whole operation. Um, and so, uh, you know, San Diego State is, is family and home forever, uh, no matter what, no matter where I go. Um, and I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, a team can, can realize that, you know, I'm technically a seasoned veteran and, and I know what it takes to win. And like you said, I come from a winning culture and, you know, hopefully I can bring that to the table and do whatever it takes to win. Ben, did you have something you want to drop in? Or are you good? No, I mean, just the, you know, the, the family aspect. It really, truly it d- did feel like a family atmosphere. We talk about Aztec Nation. I never really kind of bought into it. I always thought Aztec, it was more like Southern California or, you know, maybe the West Coast. But it really felt like an Aztec Nation there in Houston. And I was absolutely blown away by the experience. And, um, yeah, you're an Aztec for life, so... You know, we, yeah, we appreciate sure. you. We appreciate you so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys as well. Um, yeah, like like you said, it was uh, it felt like a home game. Honestly, every game in Houston felt like a home game. You know, out of the seventy thousand that were there, I'd say we were probably 30,000 30, deep. So it was uh, it was awesome to see for sure. You know, you can walk up to AG any day, he'll have a conversation with you. You'll walk up to Nate Mensa, he'll have a conversation with you. You'll walk up to Matt Bradley, he'll have a conversation with you, and that goes down the line. You know, that goes down the list of players all the way to. You know, I, I was a preferred walk-on at San Diego State, someone that really didn't have a lot of status. And I can text Malachi Flynn right now, and he'd be like, hey, how you doing, man? How's everything going? You know, just good, genuine people, you know, um, and, and you keep in touch with those guys. And that's, you know, we'll be family for life. You know, Malachi ever texts me, hey, I need you here at this day, this day, I'm there. You know, Jordan Shackle, same thing. You know, like these guys that that really sit there and, and you look at them and you look at their families and get to know their families and, and they're just good people, genuine people. And that's where San Diego State is different. And just, you get that cliche of that family atmosphere and you guys are going to be brothers and this and then what coaches sell you on all these things. And it's like San Diego State actually does that. They actually take care of their players, you know, and you know, you're going to have bumps in the road and you're going to have times where you lose and people are throwing shit around in the locker room. And then you're going to have, you know, four guys come and say, hey, calm down, man. Like, we're good. We're all good. Keep your head. Like, we're good. We got more games to play. This, this, and that. So, we'll and I appreciate you guys. Yeah. yeah, thanks for taking time, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, we'll be following you, man, wherever you land. And, you know, it, it, it'd be good to see you again at, at Viejas, too. And, um, 
yeah, just just best of luck to you. All right, guys, I appreciate you. All right, man, have a good night. Thank you. Take it easy. Take Hey, Aztec Nation, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to our channel. And then stop on over to sunsmontezuma.com where you can find more SDSU sports, news, articles, podcasts, and the freshest and most unique Aztec-inspired merchandise, including our original NIL shop. Lots of new styles there for both men and women and even kids. Your support to this channel helps fund a lot more creative ideas. So make sure to stop over to sonsofmontezuma.com. Go Aztecs!